Don't this hit make my people wanna jump, jump. Don't this hit make my people wanna jump, jump. Don't this hit make my people wanna jump, jump. Don't this hit make my people wanna Six for six of the period. 14 third quarter points. Tell them that I need more. Welcome to Amazing Words, ladies and gentlemen. And as I predicted before game two, we had a King James sighting, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, LeBron came out and played exceptionally well. Uh, from the get-go, we saw him go on the post in attack mode, attacking the paint. And that's one of the main reasons why the Miami Heat finished the game with more paint points than the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, another thing we were able to see in this game was LeBron shoot the ball. Something that I think people have really overlooked coming into this series. I think uh, a lot of spectators, a lot of people felt that um, LeBron is still not a very good shooter, you know, in comparison to a Kevin Durant or a Michael Jordan or even a Kobe Bryant. But I think y'all forgot about game seven last year. Thirty-seven, twelve boards, five of eight from the three-point line. LeBron learned how to play against the Spurs' offense. Is one of the biggest reasons why I believe the Miami Heat were going to win this series and win the next three, as I guaranteed in the last episode. For those who still watch, love you. And I, I would have traded for the world. world. Anyways, uh, the point that I'm making is that. He's had really no struggle against this team. Kawhi Leonard fouled out in game two, had nine points on nine shots. Uh, Tony Parker had 21 points and seven assists, but as soon as LeBron switched on him, Tony Parker couldn't do anything. Tim Duncan, you got to respect the old head, Tim Duncan. You've got to respect Timmy for everything he stands for because Timmy really is still dominating at such a high level that we really haven't seen from a big man since Kareem. And in all in all perspective, like mean, tying Magic Johnson for the most double doubles in in playoff history, uh, in game two as well, and, and Tim Duncan continue to dominate. But I also like to point out the fact that Danny Green had five shots. Boris Diaw had uh, 10 rebounds, 7 points, 5 assists. But Boris Diaw really can't do anything against LeBron, especially when LeBron shoots 6 or 7 in the third quarter. Chris Bosh hits a big three, finishes with 18 points. Rashad Lewis and Ray Allen. Are we in Seattle? Then you would look at me with no hesitation. Then you tell me, baby, it's yours. Nobody else is. Or are we in South Beach? Because I can't tell right now. I just talked to Jesus. He said, what up, Jesus? Rashard Lewis had 14. Ray Allen had nine. Birdman grabbed nine boards off the bench. We still haven't seen Norris Cole. We still haven't seen Mario Chalmers come out and have a major impact on this series. We saw a quick appearance from James Jones. We saw some appearances from Udonis Haslam in game two, but we still have not even seen Miami used all their best players. Shane Batty had a DMP in game two, which is surprising because he was effective in game one. Um, at the end of the day, I know there's a lot of media coverage out there to make a lot of people feel that the Miami Heat don't deserve to be in this position. They don't deserve to get this glory. You know, I think we're all forgetting. This is all earned, not given. Um, it's, if you get that vibe that maybe everybody's giving the Heat the championship, and that's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying that the best team in the NBA at this point in time is the Miami Heat. It has been the San Antonio Spurs, but it's shown in this series that the Spurs really don't match up with Heat well, and that's all because of LeBron James. Uh, the plus and minus is ridiculous when you look at the fact that when LeBron's on the court, the Miami Heat are a much better team, where then as soon as he's on the bench, they fall underneath, which really, really makes me think. So everybody who says, you know, you can't team up with the top five players, superstar this, and ah, I don't like LeBron, he's not Jordan, wah, 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 all of that is obsolete. Because right now, we've seen throughout this series, assuming that the Miami Heat are going on to win, that when LeBron James is on the court, he is the ultimate difference between this team winning a championship and being sent home against this very respectful organization and, and just the, the the true meaning of a team in professional basketball. Uh, with that being said, some of the biggest stats that stand out to me and, and why I still feel that Miami is going to win despite the fact, you know, like I said, Duncan had 18 and 15. Kawhi had struggling, falling out. Manu Ginobili had 19 and four, 19 points and four assists. But the stats that really jump off the sheet to me is that the fact that Miami Heat won the glass, 
They had more points in the paint. The Spurs had less turnovers than the Miami Heat. More steals, made 12 threes to Miami's 8 threes, and still lost at home. We in South Beach, y'all. It's about to get real interesting. It's about to get really, really interesting down the stretch. I'm telling you right now, I'm predicting Miami to win game three tonight. And um, that's all I have to say for today. Uh, I also would like to give a great shout out and congratulations to Derek Fisher. We made it. Hey, okay, we made it. Old heads keep getting them checks, baby. You will be coaching the New York Knicks. And uh, I'll be seeing you guys next episode. And I guarantee you that Miami's going to be up to win by then. To everybody watching, I want to say thank you. Uh -huh.